We have been talking this month about tackling hard cultural moments with our kids. The truth is our kids and their generation are going to at times think differently about culture and faith than we do. So we want to help you to come alongside them, to listen well, and to encourage your children to think about the world through a biblical lens. One of those major cultural moments that happened this year was the overturning of Roe v. Wade. This moment for many was a moment to celebrate, but the truth is, is that not everyone felt the same way. According to the Pew Research Company, 78% of Gen Z now says that abortion should be legal. Now, most of the people in the 78% believe that there should still be restrictions, but maybe you've experienced this tension with your children. Gen Z is characterized as being very socially minded, and maybe you've noticed that that social justice is incredibly important for your Gen Zer. Your child may have friends who have been impacted by the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Maybe your child is critical of the church and feels that it's been hypocritical in its pro-life stance. There are many who feel, or feel that the church cares about life of unborn babies, but then doesn't care about the life of the mother or the child when it's born. Now, you may agree or disagree with this, but the fact is, is we need to listen when others offer a different view, especially when it's the view of our children. Abortion and the overturning of Roe v. Wade is one of those topics our culture is talking about right now. So that means that we as parents can't be silent either. So have age-appropriate conversations about this ruling, about the sanctity of life. Ask your child if they feel frustrations with the overturning of this law. I would also caution you to not be reactive with this topic. Many of us feel very passionately about the protection of children and life, and, and we should. However, when we react emotionally, we risk shutting down conversation with our child. So if there's differences between you and your child, stop and listen. You might be surprised that after listening and respectful dialogue, you really aren't as far, as part, as far apart as you thought you were. As believers, we need to think well about culture and how that intersects with our faith. But having what better place to guide our children into practicing doing that than our homes? Even the most divisive issues can and should be talked about in our homes because remember, if you aren't discipling your kids, then they will be discipled by someone or something else. Thank you, Jenna, for that message. And thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Fridays Are For Families. We place a high value on discipleship, specifically at home, because we believe that strong disciples are made at home. And that is why we have a heart to do what we can to empower and equip you to grow as a disciple of Jesus yourself and the disciple maker of your kid. If you have any specific requests for information you would like to hear about, we invite you to share them with us, either by commenting on this video on YouTube or Facebook, or by emailing us at family at lifeatpathway.com. We look forward to seeing you next week.